Jam School Remix. This is one of the most elegant ways to find a card I can think of. They pick all the numbers. They do all the work. You have your back turned, and yet you know exactly what card they picked. All Which right. one of you is more comfortable handling a deck of cards? Probably, Probably. me. Do me a favor, buddy. I want you to imagine. Picture a grandfather clock, and it's spinning very fast. Yeah. Let me know once you've got a good rhythm and you like the speed that you've selected. Okay. You got it? Yeah. I'm going to say stop in a moment, and you're going to be on some hour from 1 to 12. Okay? Whatever that hour is, that's going to be your number. You ready? Stop. You're thinking of some hour. Whatever that hour is, I'm going to look over this way. Do me a favor. I just want you to start dealing down okay. one for each hour. And then when you get to your hour, instead of setting that card down, I want you to take a little peeksy. I want you to maybe show Jennifer, maybe show a camera, and then set it right back down on top. You got okay. it? All right, dude. All right, you got it? Yeah. All right. Take all the other cards, put them right on top. I don't want to be accused of messing with cards. Shuffle, <laughs> give it a riffle shuffle. Go riffle shuffle those bad boys. Just... Right. That was a very nice riffle shuffle. You want to do, you want to do it again? Oh yeah, Go for, for sure. It. Go for it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, screw that riffle shuffle. <laughs> I'm going to take a little look-see here. I'm going to say, I'm going to say screw all these cards. I want to say it's one of these three. I'm going to, I'm going to go with, I'm gonna say that's your card. That's Am I right? That's your card. <laughs> Boom! Yeah. Did you guys like that? That was, that was awesome. All right, that's you wanna learn how it's done? Yes. This actually combines two techniques that we've already taught on Scam School before. A while back, we had Johnny Zavant on the show who taught us how to use a slug when doing your own tricks. We also covered something called the key card principle. This one combines the two. You gotta do a little bit of pre work before you set this up, just go through and pull out all of the face cards and set them on the top of the deck. The only card that you actually need to know where it is is the topmost card. This is a case where we have both a slug and a key card. So we've got this chunk of all these face cards on top. Now, personally, uh, I don't know why, but I've always liked the Jack of Clubs has always been my favorite card in the deck. So I, I make sure that the Jack of Clubs is on top. That'll be easy for me to remember. Now you want to convince people that you're not setting anything up ahead of time. So what you could do is I was taking cards from the bottom third of the deck and then kind of doing a pharaoh shuffle or you could do a riffle shuffle as long as you keep those top 12 cards on top. Now because you have a slug of 12 cards, that's why the whole imagery of the clock works so well. Now in this case, you could say pick any number from 1 to 12, you could simplify it. So you get any number you want and now here's the tricky part. Anytime you do a trick that involves you giving directions without watching what they're up to, you have to be super specific and direct in your conversation. I asked you to have a private number. What, what private number do you have? Eight. Eight. So you ask them, again, very clearly, whenever I do anything that involves dealing down and counting, I always say, uh, nice, neat pile, neatness counts, that kind of thing. So you get them focused on something to make sure that they don't mess up the order. So they go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and they get to eight, take a little peek, and then this is, this is their card. Make sure they replace it back and then put the other cards on top, which means we don't know what their card is, but we know it's underneath what? The Jack of Clubs. The Jack of yeah. Clubs, your key card. So okay. you drop it on there, all right? So again, we don't know what their card is, we don't know where it is, we know what's underneath the Jack of Clubs. Then I say give it a riffle shuffle. Now here's, that's, this is the deal buster. Mm. Normally, that's how you prove that it's not a key card effect, is by making them do a riffle shuffle to undo where the key cards go but you can actually have them do it twice, and what you end up with is all of the face cards are spread throughout the deck. Now in this case, I told you deliberately to look at the cards, which means as I spread them, there needs to appear to be nothing you know, you, right. weird about them. You cover your own tracks by shuffle, having them shuffle it. You have them clean up the mess after you, right? Well, I bet Steven knows where this is headed. What do you, what do you suppose you do next? Now you just look for the jack of look for the Look for the jack of clubs. So how do you know which one is theirs? It'd be the face card. The face card, the first face yeah. card underneath face card. that's <laughs> theirs, right? Because we know it had to be a face card yeah. because it was the top 12, and we know it's right underneath the key card, so we find that one. At that point, you know their card, it's all presentation. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Um, yeah, if, what if they just do the one riffle shuffle? Is that going to affect it any different No, way? in fact, so. you, you really, two is the max. Because what happens is, is first of all, those top 12 cards, that first riffle shuffle, are going to spread them throughout the first half of the deck. The second riffle shuffle spreads it throughout the rest of the deck. A third riffle shuffle, mm -hmm. now you're double blending mm -hmm. the face cards and you're shifting the order of them. Mm -hmm. So really, if they want to stop after just one riffle shuffle, that's even better, to be honest. <laughs> all right, who is going to perform this for me? Ha 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 ha!
<laughs> Sorry, Jennifer, you've been busted. Okay. So you're going to think selling. of a private number between 1 and 12. Once you think of your number, you're going to deal down until you get to that number. Okay. Stop, take a peek at your, your card, and then put it back, and then replace the cards on top. Right, show me a secret card, bro. Right? <laughs> That's you. That's you. That's all you're the Hurry up! <laughs> all right, there we go. All right, all right, there we go. All right, put, put the rest of those on Are you on ready? There. Yes, okay, we're good, good, we're good. Everything's fine. So now what you do is you're gonna go ahead and just give it a little shuffle a little for me. It's all riffled and shuffled. Oh, <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. What should it be? doing some wizard power stuff. What I don't understand. Yeah, it's I don't like know. <laughs> it's tough. Like, I don't know, I don't know what could be. What could it be, what could it be? Could it be that? What? That is my yes. card! The king of clubs! What? I'm You're the king of clubs! He's dancing at the clubs! <laughs> Illusion! Holy huzzah! That was amazing! <laughs> Toast this woman! Thank Illusion. you so much, Jennifer! Scam School long timers recognize this as being another variation of the key card principle. The beauty, of course, is that by adding just a little bit of extra process, nobody's gonna figure it out and you're gonna look like a freaking wizard. Oh, what's this? Yes, it's Scam School Remix, the best of 600 plus episodes of Scam School. Each episode time compressed, so you become a wizard in the minimum amount of time. You're welcome, my liege.